Ma do thing, I wa do them. Happy a bag of agani. Hey, what you know? Boggy, what does Boggy Genje mean? Boggy Genje, Sindom Boggy Genje. Do not just give us a riff of your favorite song. I have to have a guitar so that it can come out. Natak Pichaya Kenyata Kowalenje. If you have one word to describe you, what would that word be? So, in a second, come through, grab your uh, race pack, then head down to that building over there, grab yourself some lunch, make it fast, get back up here, get your bike pack built and ready. There were a number of cycling teams here in East Africa, and they were all focused on breaking out into the world tour, and they were all coming across the same hurdles. If you don't survive, you sleep. There's a litany of challenges. The, the first being the lack of racing opportunities. So you can be a big fish here in Kenya, for example. But if you're not racing against the best, practicing against the best, your game is never going to be elevated. You'll never rise to the level required for the world tour. There's a whole host of other problems. Uh, there are resource shortages, there are travel restrictions, there are cultural barriers, linguistic barriers. But the first and foremost challenge that I think from the very beginning we've not been able to overcome is just the dearth of racing opportunities when probably everyone in your family and all of your friends were telling you this is a very stupid idea, <laughs> you said, I'm coming anyway. And we can't thank you enough because uh, it's really important. It's really important for our project. It's really important for what we're trying to do here. But yeah, without you, it wouldn't be possible. So uh, yeah, a round of applause for all of you. Thank you very much for coming. Let's turn the tables for once. Let's let Europeans and Americans know what it feels like to see a bunch of faces that look different than yours, to speak languages that are different than yours, to come from cultural backgrounds and eat different food and, and listen to different music and different socioeconomic statuses. Let them see that, let them experience it. Maybe it might even inspire a bit of empathy. That's in 10 seconds from now. Three, two, one. Off you go. 2021 and Woo! There's almost like a microclimate here in Africa where people are racing and they're racing highly competitively, but within this bubble of like larger world not seeing how good they are. And so by bringing people here from all over the world allows these athletes to show their ability. There's a distinct advantage to racing somewhere where you know and where you feel comfortable and you know the food and the climate. So it's cool to like actually be able to give them an opportunity to, to show themselves kind of on their home turf, which is something they don't, oftentimes don't get to get to have. I feel so humbled to like race against these uh, protagonists, <laughs> like Ian Boswell and, <laughs> and the rest of the big guys in the, in the race. 
it's it's a very big privilege for me. Like this thing is happening like in our soil in, in, at home, and we've always like go go outside there to race in Europe, in Australia, in Asia, just to meet these guys. But to have them come here, it's a really big thing for us. It's a, a big privilege for us, and we really really appreciate to have, to see this race happening in our country. Hard gravel is coming to Kenya. I was like, yeah, I have to be part of this, and uh, it's nice. And uh, because I wanted to see the level, and uh, yeah, this gravel thing is now becoming a big thing, and I really want to get into it. So this is like a proper good start for me. Well, yes, I think it has brought, um, you know, like what Amani been trying to do, you know, rather than taking few Africans to the race in Europe, like bring the race to them. Uh, talking to some of the Africans, even yesterday night, the night before, you know, they have seen how fast these guys can go on gravel bikes. And, you know, that sticks to their mind, you know, and that's what we wanted. Um, so that way they can either go and work on their bodies, like to improve themselves, or you know, like they can stop because it's, there's no there's no shortcut. What stand out for me, like first of all, like professionalism of the the top riders who are here, but even on the other hand, was like some of the East Africans who are really really pushing themselves. So even for the top riders, it was not a walk in the park. It was not a four days of adventure. It was a real race. The, the way I feel this race will change something, it's like the, probably the, the attention it has brought to the East Africans in a good way. Not just that they can do uh, road races, they can do uh, gravel races as well. So I think it's an, another opportunity for the East Africans to showcase themselves. With time, I think it will it will change. Even for them now, you know, like when they are growing up, they want to go to the Tour de France and stuff. But having an experience like this, probably maybe they have to think about themselves again. You did great. It was a hard day. Echt 80 kilometer tegenwind, hè? Vet of niet, Lauwers dit. To get two guys to Europe, you only teach two guys something. And if we race here with maybe four or five good Europeans, you teach 30 guys at once. Or you, at least they see the level they have to get to. Because I'm a retired pro, so I'm not the level of, of the Tour de France anymore. But I see at least the level they have to grow to. And that's something really nice about this race, and that's why I think it's good to have more races like this in Africa. So let's see, you know, let's see if we brought that competition here. If, you know, then the riders have something to gauge where they're at by. And again, this is not my idea. This is what came from the Kenyan riders. This is what came from Adrian Niyashuti Cycling Academy. This is what came from Osaka Cycling Club. This is what came from East African cycling. They were telling us, this is what we need. Well, you know, they weren't crying about the fact that they have, you know, worse bikes or, you know, not enough tubes or bottom brackets. They didn't have access to top level competition. And that's what we're trying to bring. If I go back now and see what's happening now here, 
we are not traveling to go to South Africa where a special okay. run and they are suffering to getting visa and invitation. We get a race here, like immigration, gravel race, four days, and boys, they can fly here without visa, without anything. And they do the race and back home, just one day, two days. It's a big opportunity for East African riders. You can see the Ugandan guy from Massacre team, what they're doing is amazing. They never rode a gravel race like this, and they, they come top 10 every day. I think it will be amazing, big series season in African gravel race. After gravel, everything changed now. You know, it was like, I'm in dark, in a dark place, but when after the gravel, now it was the broad right in my life. <laughs> now, my, even my head, head started to change. Yeah, and then you came on the downhill and just... <laughs> I knew once I go with you, I will die there. Because yeah. at some point I had given up on, on competitive cycling. The Amani team supported us and they gave us a chance to go and race in Europe. To win races again after like feeling that the dreams were going to die after not being in the continental team, so not being able to progress in uh, road racing. So I felt like the, my dreams again were awakened. And uh, I think if you're going to have more of such races, I'm positive that I'm, I'm going to get to the top about this by the support of the team around here as well. That's the beautiful thing about gravel racing. Gravel racing, by definition, is disruptive. That's the idea, right? Like, road cycling and all of its traditions and all of its barriers and all of its seriousness and all of its corporate business-like, you know, behaviors. And then here comes this gravel scene, right, that's like meant to be the antithesis. And that creates opportunities for us. If this disruptive event and this disruptive moment knocks down barriers, then maybe it will be easier for, our, for some of the athletes that we have that are trying to break through. Maybe it's easier for them to walk through the door. Our next year, I'm targeting to do gravel races in the US. I'm targeting to do unbound gravel road course, steamboat, SBT, I mean, Vermont. I couldn't think or know if road bike could take me in US, you know, but, but gravel does, so that's a big, big thing. Well, I have big ambitions. I want to do well in Cape Epic, a top 10 in Unbound. I think it will be pretty cool. For sure, try to win the migration gravel race in Kenya. If we achieve the goals that we have set out to do next year, it's, uh, I'm sure we'll have more young people in East Africa coming up through the run. I've always like given an example with running. People see as a, like good runners having success and they want to be like them. So if we even achieve half of our goals that we have set up next year, we, I'm sure we're going to see this impact. I'm now with the money and uh, I've done some gravel racing, which is very new to me and <laughs> it's funny, yeah. But yeah, a lot of has changed, and now there's like people getting interested, and yeah, I think maybe bigger, even bigger things to come for me from just from that one race here. Yeah. But for me, the races I do with uh, Team Amani for sure, I like push it to the maximum. See what's possible to come out of that, and then. See if I can help anyone, like any lady, also to jump on the train with Team Amani. That would just be like super cool. 
The race directors from, from Adrian Yashuti Cycling Academy, from Osaka, Kenya Riders, from Safari Simbas. I mean, they've been fighting this fight for a long time. They know how intractable it has been to break into the world tour. They saw the door crack open just a little bit. And I think it provided the motivation that these guys needed at exactly the right time. From last migration to now, there's a sense of hope that, you know, maybe we can go somewhere after all. It's not all lost. So that's very important for me. Now next year is, is a year of action now. We go forward now, not turning back. <laughs> <laughs> and what does Bogi Genje mean for you? <laughs> um, it means like you are this crew that are there for each other and fighting for each other with the same problems, same success, and you're just pushing in the same direction. And it's like a word of comrade amongst the team, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How many girlfriends do you currently have? Wait, uh, is this going to be in the... <laughs>